Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at variation in species. We're going to talk about what variation in species is and what species have variation. And we're going to talk about how this infects the chances of survival. And then we're going to look at a couple of examples. Firstly, uh, Darwin's finches in the Galapagos and an Australian example of echidnas. Variation is something that happens in any species that reproduces sexually. Uh, this sexual reproduction allows for this variation and this uh, genes being spread around uh, and mixed around within the gene pool. Asexual reproduction does not allow for this. Uh, when you have, say, binary fission of bacteria, pretty much all of the bacteria in that colony are going to be genetically identical to each other. Uh, now, these variations can be really obvious things like uh, how big something is, what colour something is, um, markings, things like this. Or it could be, um, rather than a physical level, it could be on a physiological level. Uh, so able to control blood pressure, uh, able to convert sugar into energy a little bit better, uh, things like this. So this is all variation and it's a spectrum. Most of them are in the middle. Uh, say we're talking about height. Most people are around the same height. Some people are short, some people are tall, uh, but most are around that sort of middle median area. The variation in species, or the more variation that you have within the species, increases the chances of survival if uh, that environment were to change. So it may be suited to that particular environment, uh, but then there's a selecting factor that occurs, and if uh, one end of that spectrum is more suited to the environment, the ones that aren't as well suited to the environment are going to die off, the ones that are suited to the environment are going to live, and then the population will have those genes that are a little bit more suited to the environment. Uh, a good example of this is the peppered moths example from England. Uh, when uh, the white peppered moth lands on a tree, you can't see it, so therefore the prey birds can't eat it. Um, when the Industrial Revolution happened, they were burning lots of coal, the trees turned black. The black version of the peppered moth uh, then became the one that could blend in, while the white one was the one that was seen. Uh, so the white ones uh, died, and the majority of them were the black variant. Uh, now, one of the most famous examples of this is Darwin's finches. So when uh, Darwin went to the Galapagos uh, on his trip around the world on the Beagle, uh, he collected these different birds, and he actually thought that they were different species of finches uh, because they were markedly, or in particular the beaks of these birds, were markedly different. Uh, so, But when he got them back and studied them further, he had found that they're actually all the same species, uh, but because of the different environment, and in particular the different food sources in the uh, on the islands, they'd adapted to uh, whatever the food source or the majority food source on that in island was. Uh, so if uh, they were, there was a lot of nuts that were around, they had these big crushing beaks to cut the nuts. Uh, if they uh, were eating insects and had to pull insects out of, say, the bark of a tree, they had these pointy beaks so that they could get in between the bark and get the insects. Uh, but they're all the same species of finch. Uh, if this evolution ha had uh, gone on for a longer period of time, they may have evolved into different species of finch. Uh, but at the moment, they're all the same, but had that marked variation. An Australian example of this is the echidna. Now, echidnas are found across all of Australia, uh, and they have spines on their back interspersed with the fur. Now, the spines actually have a blood flow that grows through them, so there's a, a uh, blood vessels in those spines, and it's, as well as protection, a way that the echidna can lose heat, being an endotherm, a warm-blooded animal, uh, to its environment. Now, there's variation within the species on where in Australia these are found. Uh, so, for example, the southern variant, so thinking Tasmania, is different to the northern variant uh, found in Queensland. So the southern variant is larger, uh, it has more fur and less spines, uh, as, and it's also darker. Uh, so as far as more, spur, more fur and less spines goes, that means that uh, more of that heat's being kept in uh, rather than being let out through those spines, which kind of worked like cooling fans or cooling fins. Uh, so it's got less of those, as opposed to the northern one, which uh, needs to get rid of that heat because it lives in a hot environment. Uh, it's darker so that it can absorb more heat from the environment uh, or from the sun, while the northern variant is lighter so it can reflect heat. 
and it's also larger in size than the northern one, uh, meaning that it has a lower surface area to volume ratio, uh, making it more efficient at keeping that heat inside. Uh, so we see these two echidnas, short-nosed echidnas, same species, uh, but if you look at them, they're quite a different or yeah, a different animal. Uh, well, they're not really, they're the same species, but they look a bit different. In this video, we've looked at natural variation that occurs in any species that uh, reproduces sexually. Uh, we've talked about how that increase in variation increases the chance of survival of that species in response to environmental changes. Uh, a good example of this being Darwin's finches, which all have different shaped beaks uh, being suited to the environment which they live in. And an Australian example being echidnas that in the north uh, more spiny, lighter in colour and smaller than their southern counterparts. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.